welcome to Eucanic. Today we have our 2013 Tesla Model S and we're going to go over the process in which you use to be able to remove your central airbag so that you can remove your steering wheel, clock spring, and um, combination switches in case you need to replace those. So to start with, before you do anything, because this is working with the SRS system, in being your airbag restraint system, um, we need to make sure that we have disconnected our 12 volt power supply and given the vehicle time enough to power down. And so once that's done, which is about five to 10 minutes, um, it doesn't hurt to give it a little bit longer. And then also to fully make sure that it's been discharged after you've given it some time, you can hold your hand on the, the horn and make sure that there it fully discharges. So to start with, with this vehicle, I have um, disconnected that, powered it down. I also have the vehicle raised a little bit, just so the steering wheel is easier to turn um, to access the two screws that are back here. So on both sides, there is a T30 screw that we need to loosen up. And you loosen it all the way, and then it um, the screw actually stays in the steering wheel, and you'll do that on both sides. So this side is easy to get to. This side, you need to just at least turn the steering wheel a little bit, and then you can gain access to the screw hole on the back side for this one. So using your T30, um, I use just a small T30, or you can use a long screwdriver type one, and get in there, and then be able to loosen that. Now, you've loosened the T30s on both sides. We're gonna go ahead and turn our steering wheel back to the central location, just so that when we take everything apart, we continue to have our, our wheels um, straight forward. Now, typically when we undid that, we would have thought we'd pull on here, but that's not the case. We need to be able to pull around here. It's all the airbag and the switches and this trim is all one full unit. So using your pry tool and being able to get in under the trim, we can pull this out and work our way around separating the trim and the airbag from the uh, steering wheel. And so it's just little clips going into the rubber mold of the steering wheel. There we go. And so, so these are where the, the clips go into this tough rubber. And so now, just being able to bring up our steering wheel and the trim combinations, or our, we have these switches here, but we now need to disconnect the electrical connectors. And then, so just squeezing the two clamps on both sides. and being able to pull that and unplug it. And so that's uh, the disconnect of the airbag with the uh, all the trim connections as one full unit, and that's the way you... Now, with the airbag removed, we are now going to go over the process to remove our steering wheel. Now, we do make sure that our tires are um, facing straight and that the steering wheel is in the central location. Um, we want to make sure of that so that when we disconnect this, that the clock spring is in the location that it is supposed to be. If you do disconnect it opposite, you will have to make sure that you get the clock spring back into the central location before you put everything back together. Because if you break that ticker tape when you steer the steering wheel to the right or the left, then you'll have to replace the whole thing. So, to start with, we have an impact gun here to be able to get this bolt out. We remove that bolt and now able to pull the steering wheel off. Now we have a little line indicator there and we have um, a master spline or a, a double spline split so that we know that we should put back on there. If not, you can make a mark with a marker here so that you know um, where to put it back on. So we are ready to be able to pull our steering wheel off and then set that aside. And so that would be how you'd remove your steering wheel. If you were just replacing it, then you're ready to put it back on. Now we are ready where we want to remove our clock spring 
as well as the combination switches because they're all one full unit together. And so we are seeing that we have these little loop here and loop here and our um, tape is in the middle there. And so that's telling us that it's where it should be. If it was one revolution off, this would not be inside the, uh, the arrows here and things wouldn't be lined up. We also have an arrow line and an arrow line here. Now, uh, fortunate we're not able to quite turn this unless we were to push that little tab inside there, then we could turn it and get it out of alignment. But we are able to keep it in alignment for that purpose because we only get two and a half revolutions to the right, two and a half to the left, and otherwise, you're, if it goes more than that, it's going to, it's gonna break it. So the way you remove this is we literally just grab it and then pull, just give it a nice little pull and we're able to pull this out. And now we have this little skirt on the back with the little clips that hold it that we remove and then there is an electrical connection up in here that we need to reach in I pull the tab back and then unlock and pull it out So we pull this little tab out, that's a safety lock mechanism, and then with that, being able to depress the clip that holds that all in there and be able to remove that for replacement, get a new one of these, and then be able to replace the whole unit. This is all one unit with your combination switches, clock spring, everything is all yeah, this clock spring is the clock spring and all of the combination switches that are on your vehicle is all one full unit. One thing that you might need to do is you might need to undo these three screws in here and remove this, um, this skirt here and reinstall it to your clock spring. But otherwise, this is all one full unit. So we are ready to install it. We have our electrical connection that we need to back on there. We've got our safety lock um, already remounted in there so that we can just reach in here. There we go. Making sure that our safety lock is in there. Going over the uh, the steering shaft here so that it will come out here. We get this on enough where we can now um, install the clips on the back here for our little skirt. Tuck it in there so that all continues to look nice. And now being able to just push this back in, we want to keep everything up in the central top and just press it back. That's it. And so it's held on there and we are now ready where we can put our steering wheel back on. So we've made sure these two lines line up. They got arrows. We've got our ticker tape in here. We fortunately, we can't actually spin this out and get it out of alignment unless we push in that little tab. So um, we should be good. But you do want to make sure that things are lined up where they need to be so that once you put this all back together, you don't um, have that mishap where you go ahead and drive your vehicle and it uh, breaks that tape and then you have to replace the whole thing again. So we now have our steering wheel ready to remount that and that we just line up. We had the little line indicator lining up here or we put a mark on it with a permanent marker just so we know that we keep everything lined up where it should be. And then we have our impact or a suitable tool to be able to get this tightened up in there. Getting tight. So, and we did realign our, um, our lined indicators on there. So that's now installed. And so we've got our steering wheel installed and we are ready to put our airbag piece back on. And we have here the yellow. And so, because there's the two connectors on the uh, airbag unit, we wanna make sure that the yellow one goes over here. So bringing our airbag unit back up and ready to install. These are where the two screws tighten 
this airbag unit onto the vehicle, and here's all of our electrical connection. So we have the yellow one. Just press it in there, lock it in. And then same thing with this other side, lock it in there. And now being able to bring our airbag and trim as all one unit and bringing it in, pressing it into place here. And making sure, so we've got little tabs that need to line up with the, uh, the molding. Okay, so everything is uh, pressed and snug and tight. Last thing is to tighten up the uh, T30 screws that hold this all on for even extra security. And so you can tighten this one without moving the steering wheel. This side, either you'll need to turn the steering wheel one way or the other so that you can have access because otherwise your combination switch is in the way. So that's the replacement of your clock spring, steering wheel, airbag, on your 2013 Tesla Model S. Thanks for watching, Eucanic.